All right, I am back with another video, and today we are going to be doing probably one of the most requested videos, like, in a long time on this channel. I have been asked for my take on a Drizzt Doe Erden build. I really hope I pronounced that right. Uh, basically, if you don't know who he is, and honestly, I'd be surprised if you didn't, if you're in this kind of space in the internet, uh, he is basically one of the most popular D&D characters of all time, spanning every single edition, basically, and having, like, a dozen or so books written about him, maybe even more. Uh, he's, long story short, he's basically this drow ranger character who went on many and many adventures, being a kind of hero that, like, is the exception to the rule when it comes to drow. And honestly, if I was to really, really do that character justice, I would be reading a lot of books and all that, uh, but unfortunately I just don't have the time, as much as I have an interest in reading those novels. And obviously when people like, think of a Drist build, they're probably thinking of, like, oh, you know, a bit of ranger here, a bit of fighter there. I know other YouTubers like B Blood Ronin have done their take on it, and honestly, I did watch his video, which is kind of contrary to what I would normally do for this sort of thing, just to kind of see what he kind of thought of, like, making such an iconic character, and honestly, he pretty much nailed what I would have done. He went for a ranger fighter, and I honestly think that's probably the best way to go if you're trying to make Drist himself. I'm not doing that today, though. If you were on, if you were around for a certain stream a little while back, where I suddenly went on a tangent and started looking into Drist because so many people were talking about it in the chat, I learned a lot of things. I did my research and all that, and realized just how much of a popular character he is. And I didn't really want to just recreate him, so I mentioned this. I said, "Why don't instead of me just making Drist, I make a Baldur's Gate three character?" who is inspired by Drist, not just, you know, oh, I've made a character that's inspired by the character, no, I mean, the literal character himself has read the stories of Drist, the rumours, the legends passed down over time, and is inspired to be like his hero. So I've made the Drist fan club, essentially. But I wanted to I wanted to take it even further than that, and I think as we go, you'll see how the kind of levelling of this build defines how the character is. Basically, their story, like, why they chose to be like Drist in the first place, I mean, that's pretty obvious, but, and how that kind of shaped who they would be and what powers would end up influencing them. So, with, so, kind of what I'm going for with this build is somebody who does idolize Drist and is kind of, and does have a playstyle similar to what I would kind of expect Drist to be, but with my own kind of twists on it to change him, to change this character from being just a poorly made copy of Drist in a way. And, I, and when I say poorly made, I don't mean like people, other people have tried to make builds or make characters like Drist and like saying they're poorly made. That's not what I mean. I just feel like within the limit, with the confines of Baldur's Gate 3, any attempt to fully recreate Drist is going to feel kind of poor in the fact that it's just, you're not quite going to get the same thing as somebody with so much history and background, especially when you can't get like the very specific items that make up Drist's whole fighting style and stuff like that. If that makes any sense. I mean, credit to the people who have actually gone out of their way to do this, like Blood Ronin. Like I said, he did a really, really good job. But I just kind of wanted to put my own spin on the kind of concept. So, without further ado, let's get started with the Drist fan club. So, obviously we are going to kick things off as a ranger. I mean, that just makes perfect sense. At the end of the day, a person who idolizes Drist to the point of, like, basically wanting to be him is going to start studying, like, how to be a ranger. And I think being a ranger makes sense. You're a scout, you're a tracker, owning a deep connection with nature and being able to become a bit more stealthy and such like that, because this character is going to need to escape the Underdark. And for those of you who don't know, Drow society is matriarchal and basically the women rule over everything and the men are kind of, well, they're interns, to use Pointy Cat's description of the term. Um, and well, yeah, he would basically be escaping from the Underdark with his life barely intact. So I feel like learning to be a ranger and surviving out in the wilderness until you learn to escape the Underdark and reach the surface makes a ton of sense, because this guy is absolutely going to be an Underdark Drow Society refugee, a bit similar to Drist. 
but he didn't get out alone, as we'll get into later. But we're going to be starting with a Ranger. Ranger is going to give us a bunch of options, like a favoured enemy to either give us Bounty Hunter, Keeper of the Veil, Mage Breaker, Ranger Knight, or Sanctified Stalker. I would personally go with Ranger Knight. That's going to give you a skill proficiency in history, which again, if you studied up on the lore and legends of Drist, technically in this world, that is history, so it would make sense to have a history proficiency. As well as giving us heavy armor proficiency, allowing you to use any armor you like. Uh, I am going with medium armor for this build, just because it kind of fits, but you can do whatever you like here, it really doesn't matter. Play it how you want it. As for your natural explorer feature as well, you can either go with Beast Tamer to get a fine familiar, Urban Tracker to gain proficiency in sleight of hand, but with the background we already have that, so that's kind of wasted here. So, and you can go for Wasteland, Wonder, or Cold, Fire, or Poison. I went with Poison just because, again, Drow and Poison, they kind of go hand in hand in some ways. So it made sense to kind of, like, there's literally Drow Poison. So it made sense for this guy to have Poison Resistance Mind off the bat. Perhaps he was experimented on to create more potent poisons back in the Underdark or something like that. So I feel like having a natural resistance to Poison makes sense, but Cold or Fire would obviously be a bit more meta. But I wanted to pick up Poison because I just felt like it added to the character. As for our ability schools, they are going to look very strange, but I'll get into why. Strength, we don't need. We're using finesse weapons. Dritz use scimitars, so so are we. Dexterity is at 8. We are going to be using the gloves of dexterity, as you can see, to buff this up. This is just how I kind of had to do the build in terms of being able to get all of the stats that I wanted, because as you can see, this build is a little bit multi-ability score dependent. Constitution is at 16 here. This gives us a decent chunk of health, allowing us to be an effective frontline fighter. Intelligence is at 12, just because I had some extra points to put in, and you can put these into strength instead if you like, if you want to get some benefits out of that. But I feel like intelligence is better. I, feel, I kind of see this character as being a face of the party, so being good at intelligence, wisdom, and charisma all makes sense, but intelligence we needed the least. Wisdom at 14, which may seem weird for ranger levels, but we're mainly only going to be taking utility spells from rangers, so we don't really need the high spell save DCs, and 14 is pretty good for saving throws. And finally, Charisma at 16. This is going to give us a really decent, uh, you know, basically success rate in dialogue, as well as it's going to be our main spell casting stat which we'll get to in a minute. I know that seems a bit weird for a character like this, but trust me, when we get into the de in depth into the build, it will make sense. As for our skill proficiencies, I went with the Urchin background, giving us stealth and sleight of hand, as well as gaining history from our, um, our ranger feature as well, and perception because we're a drow, we get access to three more skills on top of that. I've decided to go for investigation, insight, and survival. All of those made pretty good sense to me, but I could also see nature working as well. Next up, at Ranger level 2, we are going to be able to pick a fighting style, and since we're dual wielding, we basically have to go with two weapon fighting. Drist did use a bow, uh, but it wasn't really his main focus, he's always pictured with his scimitars a bit more. However, while I do have a bow on this build, I'm not grabbing something like Sharpshooter, so archery isn't really as necessary. Uh, and again, we're focusing more on the scimitars, so we're going to be going with that instead. We're going to go with two weapon fighting. And we do get a couple of spells. Like I say, I only really want utility options here. Hunter's Mark is going to be a really solid spell for us. For some reason, for the longest time, I thought this had a saving throw against the person you mark, but it just straight up doesn't. So it's free extra damage for the cost of our concentration, which, especially for now, we're not going to really have too many other things for concentrating on. So it makes sense. And Drist was you know, a hunter previously, so I think that makes perfect sense. As well as grabbing Speak with Animals, one of my favourite utility uh, spells in the game, just giving you the ability to converse with animals whenever you like, so it feels pretty nice to have that here, especially with our high charisma, intelligence and wisdom, making us really good in dialogue. Now we're really good in dialogue with Scratch. Next up, at Ranger level 3, we are going to be able to choose our subclass. Now, Beastmaster is an option if you want to kind of get an animal companion, but as you can see, I've already got that covered in a different way. So for those of you that don't know, again, be surprised if you don't, Driss was uh, kind of famously shown to have a panther companion, so I went out of my way to get that here, we'll get into that a bit later. Beastmaster unfortunately doesn't have an animal companion uh, that's a panther naturally, but with mods you can get it. Hunter would also make sense. Drist was literally a hunter. This would get you things like Hunter's Prey and a couple of other useful features. But it's not what I want for this build. Because again, this character isn't just Drist. This is someone who is who wants to be like them. But let's just say they're not exactly like them in all the same ways. We're going Gloomstalker. 
Now, this is comes with this is giving going to give us a bunch of stuff related to Drist, namely Dread Ambush, are giving us a big bonus to our initiative. Our movement speed increases on the first turn of combat, and we gain a free attack, but deals an extra D8 of damage. So we get a massive opening round. Drist is known for being very quick, especially with his like. Uh, Braces of the Blinding Strikes, I think they're called. I do have the wiki page open here. I'm just going to double check the name on that one. Uh, yes, Braces of Blinding Strike. Basically, that make him extremely agile. So I kind of wanted to focus on that as well with this build, getting a lot of, like, Dritz's kind of items in some way, shape, or form. And I feel like getting his, like, blinding speed that he has makes sense with Dread Ambusher. Dread Ambusher, like I said, is going to give us all this good stuff, as well as we're going to get a couple of other things, like Dread Ambusher Hide to allow us to hide as a bonus action, and Umbral Shroud to become invisible if we, uh, stay still and are obscured. Well, actually, no, we don't have to stay still, we just have to be obscured, but it will end early like regular invisibility. This gives us a ton of unique abilities that are probably related to how this guy even managed to get out of the Underdark in the first place. Again, this guy is not dressed, he is not the legendary hero, he is not as skilled, so he may have picked up some extra abilities on the way to help him out. And all this kind of shadowy stuff feels very drow to me, so it feels like it kind of fits right in naturally. We also get Disguise Self, which believe it or not works perfect for a Drist build, because Drist had an item called Agatha's Mask, which basically gave him Disguise guy's self whenever he wanted it, so I think it makes sense for us to pick it up in some way, shape, or form here. We also do gain some spells, and we get an extra one here. I would just pick something simple, like a utility option. Uh, grab whatever you like here, something like Fog Cloud could be nice to kind of conceal yourself. Uh, we'll get a way to get rid of blindness later if you're worried about that, so you can pick up that. Animal Friendship could also make sense, or Long Stride or Enhanced Sleep, although we will have ways of getting this later. The only reason I'm not going for things like Ensnaring Strike and... Um, Hail of Thorns is because uh, they do require saving throws, and again, our wisdom's not the highest, but if you feel like you're not too worried about that, you can probably still pick up Hail of Thorns, as it is going to still do half damage uh, from the explosion, so you are still going to get a bit out of this, so I'd probably take Hail of Thorns anyway. From our racial choice as well, we are going to get Fairy Fire at this point. Uh, Drist is also kind of known for having the base abilities of Drow, and I decided to play into those a bit more. We're going to get some ways of getting like Fairy Fire and Darkness, which Drow normally get, but through our for our actual classes and not just our race, so we have ex so we have more ready access to them. So yeah, definitely want to go to at least level three of Ranger. With Ranger level four, now you have a choice. We can either go. Like, we can go to Ranger level 4 and leave, or we can go to level 5 of Ranger. It's up to you. In fact, I might recommend going to level 5 of Ranger and then re specking later. I think the eventual. It's entirely up to you. There's kind of some variance in the levels with this build. You'll see as we get further into it. But for now, I'll, let's just go with what I kind of found worked best in testing. So. With range at level 4, we are going to get our first feat, and I'm just going to take an ability score improvement and bump up our charisma. Because, again, by this, since you get the gloves of dexterity so early in Act 1, and by the way, uh, if you are going to be playing this building, you obviously won't have the gloves of dexterity right away. Don't start with 8 dexterity. Probably have it be 16, uh, probably just go for standard ranger stats, 16 dex, 16 con, 14 whiz, uh dump points wherever, and then respect to our starting stats. Something along those lines. I wonder how many people are going to ask me in the comments, hey, what stats should I start with before I get the gloves of Dex and then didn't watch the video where I explained it just later than I probably should have. You know, that happens a lot. Anyways, <laughs> I think we're going to bump up our Charisma here as it is going to be our most important stat if you haven't guessed what I'm going for at this point. But let's jump into that now. Like I said, you could go to level 5 of Ranger. You would get extra attack, Misty Step as well, and access to level 2 spells from the Ranger list, although none of these I really care about. So, if you wanted to go for this, you absolutely could, or maybe, like I said, you can go for this and then respec later. Uh, and this, you would have a reason to go with this if you're playing not on Honor Mode, but I actually do think only going to level 4 of Ranger is going to make more sense when we have all the levels to make our full build. So let's go over to our next multi-class, and it's Warlock. Now, this is where we're going to get really in-depth into the lore of this specific character. Imagine a drow, okay, living in this, you know, society that treads them down, wanting to escape, but never being able to, constantly living in this absolute hell where they can only dream of managing to escape in some way, shape, or form, but they just never really can. 
And then they start hearing about this legend. Somehow this these rumors, these folklore tales seep into their into his social circle, and he learns about Drist Doerden, a legendary drow who was able to escape the confines of the Underdark and go on to become an amazing hero. At this point, our character is going to go out of their way to find every single thing they can possibly learn about Drist, his combat style, his many adventures, the items he picked up, the companions he met along the way. He would learn everything he possibly could. In his mind, he knew everything. He knew how to fight like Drist, he knew how to move like Drist, but his body, his body could just not keep up. He was weak, he was malnourished, and in the state he was in, there was no way he was ever going to escape. Which is why, in a moment of weakness, he accepted a pact from a dangerous shadow in the corners of the of the Underdark, a something of his own ancestry, an arch fey that crept around in the shadows and basically offered him the ability to become just like his hero. The pact was this: she, this arch fey warlock, this unknown entity, would give him the abilities, the nimbleness of Drist, but. He would be exactly like his hero, warts and all, because despite Drist's legendary status, he had flaws, and they'll come across in this build as we go. But of course the Archface influence changed this character as well. The kind of Warlock Pact abilities that we got changed our, our Ranger from a Hunter Ranger into a Gloomstalker Ranger, gaining shadowy abilities from an Archfey of the Underdark, as well as a few abilities that we'll get into now. So. The subclass, as expected, is the Archfiend, giving us access to Fairy Fire more readily than just our racial feature, which again, makes sense. We also get Fame Presence, allowing us to charm or frighten nearby foes, sort of in a radius around us of 3 meters, with beguiling disturbing magics, allowing us to maybe charm our way into making the guards look the other way while we escape the confines of our society, something along those lines. As well as we get to pick up two cantrips, and no, I'm not grabbing Eldritch Blast, that's not the Drist way. This is my second Warlock build this week that does not take Eldritch Blast. I know. So we can pick up friends and mage handlers, they're both quite useful. As well as being able to pick up some spells, obviously we're keeping Fairy Fire. And it's entirely up to you what you want your second spell to be. I went with Armor of Agathis, just because I felt like that is quite a useful spell to have. Giving us temporary hit points, as well as cold damage on retaliation when hit. And it can scale up with our uh, spell slots. Unfortunately, we're only going to be getting um, up to level 3 spell slots with Warlock. So uh, you're only going to be getting a maximum of 15 temp uh, temporary hit points and an extra 15 cold damage to any creature that attacks you. But that's still decent, better than nothing, especially when we're a frontline fighter who likes that little bit of extra tankiness. So I feel like it works out quite nice. At Warlock level 2, we are going to gain access to Invocations. And of course, we're picking up Devil's Sight. Devil's Sight is going to allow us to see normally in darkness, both magical and non-magical, to a distance of 24 meters, allowing us to get over the darkness that we get already. We would have had this at this point point because we're a drow so we have darkness already at level five so we can now use it to its full ability as well as beguiling influence going to get which is going to give us uh perception uh not perception uh deception and persuasion proficiency overall just making us very effective in combat and conversation we also do gain another spell at this point and it's entirely up to you what you want to pick i don't think it really matters hex is obviously usually quite a popular option but we already have hunter's mark which i feel like is more on theme for a build like this anyway so it really is a pick your favorites situation uh we'll go with arms of hadar next up at warlock level three we do get to pick our pact boon and yes i know we are going with pact of the blade our pact of the blade is going to allow us to use our charisma for the attack and damage rolls of our weapons and since we're not going to level five of ranger at least in this variant we're still going to be able to be a full martial fighter with extra attack this way however if you decide to drop a level of one of your classes into put, and put it into another you could go for level five of ranger and then instead go for something like pact of the tome for a bit your more utility or pact of the chain for a more powerful find familiar pact of the tome can be quite fun because later on we'd get haste which would be quite nice for a build like this that focuses on speed but that's entirely up to you i'm going to be going with pact of the blade today again because i want extra attack in some shape or form by taking that level out of ranger and we actually do have one more multi-class in this build that I want that I think works better with two levels for this build but again you can change that up however you like so back to the blade like I said is going to allow us to become proficient with any weapon we like as well as um be able to attack using our charisma instead of just our uh, dexterity even though our dexterity is at 18 with the gloves of um what you call them uh the gloves of dexterity how did I forget the name uh you know we still 
we, we're going to want to be able to use our charisma as well. You'll see why. As well as we do get to pick up a level 2 spell at this point, and darkness just makes perfect sense. Now we can use it outside of it just being a racial feature. It's still nice to have the racial feature versions. There are two versions that we can use once per long rest without expending our very limited spell slots, but now we have the ability to use it more than once per day, which I think is great. So now we have the darkness devil's light strategy online for us. At Warlock level 4, we are going to get our second feat, and I'm just going to take an ability score improvement and max out that charisma, giving us maximum spell casting with our, with our Warlock stuff, as well as maximum uh, damage with our weapon attacks. Basically, everything we want in a single stat. We do get another cantrip at this point, and we'll take Minor Illusion. And for our other spell, we can grab kind of whatever we like. I like Misty Step on this build, but Hold Person is also really good, as well as Mirror Image. So again, it's a pick your poison type of situation. I'm going to be going for Mirror, uh, for Misty Step. At Warlock level 5, we do get our Deep Impact feature, meaning now we can make an extra attack with our Pact Weapon. If you're not playing on Honor Mode, and you go to level 5 of Ranger and get regular extra attack, these two will stack, giving you three main hand weapon attacks per turn, as well as one with our offhand, because of our... Uh, bonus action attack, leading to, you, leading to you having four attacks per turn. So if you're playing a bit more casually, you might like the 5-5 five, five split, like at least a 5-5 five, five split on both of these um, kind of, what you call them, classes. <laughs> I'm really forgetting my words today quite a lot. So uh, yeah, I think that, you know, it works out quite nicely if you want to go that route. But again, I'm kind of taking on a mode into consideration a little bit here, at least a little bit. So I'm going to go with the 4-5 split for now at least. Well, more than 5 as you'll see. We also do get access to a level 3 spell and it's entirely up to you what you want to pick here. I like counter spell for the utility but plant growth would feel a bit naturey if you want to lean into that range of vibe a bit more but I know Drist wasn't all about, you know, the nature stuff. At least I'm pretty sure he wasn't from what I read. I don't know, the Forgotten Realms Wiki was surprisingly limited in information, but I think Counterspell is just a nice overall uh, defensive option. Anyway, we also do get another Eldritch Invocation, and I want to pick up Maya the Mind to give us Slow. This may seem like a weird choice, but think about it this way. A character who's really, really fast is going to make everyone around them seem really slow. So you can play the slow as less it being about everyone else around you being slower, just you're so fast that they just are perceived as being slower and we can target up to six creatures with this with this effect and as long as they don't succeed the saving throw and we maintain our concentration their ac and dexterity saves are reduced by two meaning that we're able to hit with you know our attacks a lot easier i don't know i just felt like it fit in a weird way and finally, at Warlock level 6, which is the highest level of the Warlock we're going to go to in this version, we're going to get Misty Escape. Upon taking damage, we become invisible, and on our next turn, you can cast Misty Step, although this will break invisibility, giving us a chance to kind of get out of danger upon getting hit. Again, moving so quick that, they, that people don't see where you've gone. I know Drift isn't really like a Flash-style speedster, but I really wanted to lean into the speed aspect, because that felt quite fun to me. We also do gain another level 3 spell at this point, and I think I will pick up that plant growth I mentioned earlier earlier but i'm sure people would have other ideas now at this point again that fifth level of ranger could work out for you a seventh level of warlock would get you an extra invocation or and level four spells if you wanted something like greater invisibility but i want to propose something different and stay with me on this i want barbarian levels now there is one part of drist that i didn't actually see discussed in the little bit i kind of researched about him like i say uh, and obviously I mainly read the Forgotten Realms Reiki, but this is kind of something that was mentioned in passing, but not a lot of detail was kind of gone into about it. Drist has an alternate personality, something that he learned to gain control of over time, but still affected him majorly, called the Hunter, basically reverting to animalistic tendencies in a way that, they, that Drist became violent and dangerous to those around him. Now, obviously we the hunter was a bit more of a silent stalker type again a bit like a panther but in we can't really get that as well in this game like at least visually and mechanically but a barbarian's rage is pretty damn close and again when the archway warlock gave our little disciple of drist his power or oh, that's oh that's the name of the video the disciples of drist yeah i like that um disciple our little disciple here the kind of pact was, again, one of those tricksy packs where you are exactly like your hero, warts and all. Meaning that we also gain the Hunter persona. Meaning that in 
in dire straits, we will go into a rage, giving us the ability to deal two extra damage with melee and improvised weapons, as well as throwing, and gaining resistances to physical damage and advantage on strength checks and saves. Those resistances to physical damage are actually going to be really nice for making us a frontline fighter, making us way more tanky. If you're going to roleplay this character accurately, you won't be ranging all the time, only when it kind of gets a bit dire, but I feel like it's a nice little addition to the build roleplay-wise, so I wanted to pick it up here. But then there's also Barbarian level 2, and this is where the variance in the level starts to come. If you just care about that one level for Rage and you don't care about picking up Reckless Attack in Danger Sense, then it doesn't matter. You can kind of leave this level and go for a level, an extra level in something else. But I like picking up uh, level 2 of Barbarian. This means we're going to be able to give ourselves advantage on attack rolls whenever we like, giving us a higher chance to crit, as well as being able to make up for bad rolls, guaranteeing that we're going to be able to hit more often. Again, I can imagine... I can imagine this rather than it being a reckless attack, more or less being like a very speedy feint. Like you miss your initial attack, but then are immediately able to follow it up, causing like, you know, like basically how it works in the game. Like you use it on a reaction. So, oh, I missed my attack, but if I qu attack quickly here, then I can still get a hit in. That's kind of how I'm flavoring it. As well as danger sense, giving you advantage on deck saving throws against traps, spells, and services. Uh, basically, again, you're just very, very quick. You're not very likely to be caught off guard. It all felt very flavorful. And Taking two levels of Barbarian means a nice decent chunk of extra HP for us, taking us up to 108, which I think is quite nice overall. And that is the build. Overall, what you're going to be getting out of this is a ton of versatility. You're going to be able to dual wield quite effectively. Our Ranger levels giving us access to things like Dread Ambusher to be extremely quick uh, and, you know, Disguise Self and a bunch of other stuff. You're going to feel like you are this shadowy very dexterous, fast fighter, very much like Drist himself, or at least my interpretation of him. I mean, I love the Dread Ambusher stuff, I think it works perfectly for a build like this, and then combining that with the Archface stuff to get, like, Darkness and Devil Sight, uh, you know, the Charisma-based attacks, a bunch of these other utility spells and such like that, like Slow, for example, I think it all works together quite nicely to create an really interesting character overall. I'll admit that the Warlock spells don't give us that much overall until you get to some of the higher level stuff, but again, it's mainly just utility, all meant to augment our already powerful melee and ranged fighting style, like things like Hunter's Mark and all that can really be nice, like I say, Armor of Agathis is great for defense, Fairy Fire to give us advantage, as well as, I guess, the uh, Reckless Attack as well, so it's a little bit pointless, but hey, giving advantage to our allies as well is nice. Slow, I think, is one of the better concentration options you're going to have, as well as Darkness, just that darkness devil sign combo is always going to be really, really strong for us, giving us a ton of staying power in fights. But let's keep going for now and get into the equipment. So, uh, I kind of went for the a mostly standard sort of spread for... Drist for like a Drist character here. So we're going for dual scimitars and the best kind of scimitars in the game for us are the Justicia scimitar and the Sylvan scimitar. But Justicia scimitar is one of the only plus two scimitars in the game. Uh, it, whenever we attack with advantage, we have a chance of blinding our target. I felt like that was very on theme for the kind of stuff that we're going for. I've also buffed both of these weapons with a twin cast Drake Throat Glaive from my buddy Gale here to give them a bit more oomph, because uh, this now is a plus three weapon, and this goes from a plus one to a plus two. The Justitia Scimitar also comes with a unique attack as well, uh, getting Shadow Soaked Blow, dealing a bit of extra psychic damage, and won't break our concealment once per short rest. It's just a nice, really big, powerful kind of swift strike that we can use. I've also gone with the Sylvian Scimitar in the offhand, so in which instead of its dexterity modifier, uses our spellcasting ability modifier for attack rolls, meaning that both of these are essentially packed weapons for us, which is really nice. As you can see, we get a decent chunk of damage out of both. So overall, quite solid. We're going to be dealing a lot of damage per turn with this build. As well as for our bow, I wanted to show off a unique bow, because obviously there's the Gonta Mail, there's the Dead Shot, there's the Dark Fire Short Bow, all of those will work. But this is a unique thing that I felt like was actually quite on theme. This is the Hell Rider Longbow, giving us a plus three bonus to initiative rolls and advantage on perception checks, meaning we're even faster at the start of combat. Between this and Dread Ambusher, we're never ever going to be last in the turn order. Hell, we're never even going to be second, we're always going to be first. Also, it comes with another unique ability, Fiendish Fire. Once per turn, a creature hit by this weapon will possibly infl be inflicted with Fairy Fire. In fact, there we go. There's the bow itself. Um, pretty interesting, actually. I feel like this 
oddly fits for this build. Just being able to spread fairy fire, which is kind of a drist thing to do, as well as making us really, really quick, it just felt right. Again, the bow is not the main focus of this build, but if again, if you wanted something that's more powerful, but kind of less thematic than the Gone to Mail or the Deadshot, I mean, the Deadshot's not less thematic, the Deadshot is probably a straight upgrade to this, but I featured that in a lot of builds, and I wanted to show this off, which I haven't before, because it just felt so right. Anyways, let's get into the rest of the build. The Obviously, the big the big thing about trying to make a Drist build is replicating the fashion, the kind of armor hidden under the green cloak and hood. Uh, unfortunately, Drist kind of has like a darker leather brown armor, which I absolutely could have done, but I really wanted to use medium armor with this build, so I kind of came up with a knockoff look. You could probably get something a bit closer if you stuck with light armor, but I was quite happy to go for this. Uh, for the benefits, I think um, his armor was described as being like a mithril chainmail, which I guess you could go for the elven chain for this, but your AC overall would be a lot lower. Uh, and I want to make a build dedicated to that armor set later because it has some unique features. Uh, so I kind of went for the armor of agility for now and kind of colored it in the best way I could. Speaking of coloring things, actually, uh, I learned something today about the die system in this game. So. It's a bit weird. Apparently, going from one die to another die can change the colour that you would normally get. This is technically dyed Harlequin black and white, and but if you do that, it comes up with a completely different colour scheme, like this is black and this is a much darker sort of grey. But, if you go for Feywild green and dun dun which is a weird name and then i think actually this is brown alabaster now when i think about it not harlequin black and white it creates a completely different color i'm gonna have to experiment with dye combinations to see what creates what but yeah apparently placing certain dyes in certain orders gives you a completely new look i had no idea and i'm not sure it's intentional but i will be exploring that in further detail later anyways tangent over if it's a more you know type deal so, let's get into the actual equipment. Starting off with the Hood of the Weave, you gain a plus two bonus to spell safety C and spell attack rolls. This is going to be really good for us using things like Slow, or even Hail of Thorns with our slightly weaker wisdom, to make sure that we're going to be getting this off on, though getting those effects off on our foes. Uh, and of course, it's one of the only kind of like hoods in the game that's actually decent. Uh, there is the Assassin of Ball cow, but I don't think we're going to become an Assassin of Ball with this build, although I can actually see a Dark Urge build working for this with the kind of whole the hunter vibe if you wanted to go with that but another early game hood since this is an act 3 option would be the hat of uninhibited kishigo basically looks the exact same uh the effect is completely pointless for our build since we don't use unarmed attacks it's just there for the fashion i didn't color it unfortunately but you could kind of see how it would work obviously though but of the weave looks a lot better and of course we needed the cloak so let's stack on that ac and saving through kind of buffs with the Cloak of Protection, basically one of the only kind of longer cloaks in the game that kind of worked for this build. I mean, there is others, but I kind of preferred this one. Again, just getting that flat buff, giving us a whopping 22 AC and pretty damn good saving throws. I mean, across the board, our int's a little bit low, but otherwise, our saving throws are very, very good, especially our dexterity, which is great. Uh, the Armor of Agility, as already mentioned, this adds our full Dexterity modifier to our Armor Glass and does not impose disadvantage on Stealth Ability Checks. This is a medium armor, meaning we can use our Rage of it and all that, and it gives us a plus two to our saving throws, so adding to that already pretty awesome buff that we get from that. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I think the look is quite nice, and overall it's going to be really, really good for us, but this is Act 3. In early Act 2, you can get the 1T Scale Mail, which does the exact same thing, except this one gives you a plus one bonus to your initiative rolls, and looks a bit different. I mean, I think this actually looks pretty cool too. I'd say maybe color this maybe like a muddy, uh, tell you what, experimentation time. Uh, I think you, we'll, we'll get back to you later, but... I want to see if this looks the way I think it will. If we go for like a muddy red, and I get that more brownish look for Dritz's armor. Ah, oh, no, it goes gold. But wait, maybe if I use the technique I just learned. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> but yeah, there's definitely some room to experiment with the uh, kind of look, I would say. You know, try a few different colors. See what works out. Maybe a black and summer green could look nice. I know, I'm going on a lot of tangents with this video. Uh, you'll have to experiment with the colours, but definitely use the 1T scale mail in the early game for certain. And that's not what I wanted you guys to look like. Guys, please. Okay, there we go. Let's get let's get the camera angle back. That's the wrong character. 
this video is turning into a disaster. <laughs> okay, back on track. I Don't you love my professionally made videos? Anyways, the 1-2 scale mail is going to be a great option up until you get the armor of agility, in which it is a straight upgrade. Pretty much, like a plus 2 to your AC, and I think the saving throw stuff is a bit more important than the plus 1 to initiative rolls, since we already have such high initiative rolls with this build. So, but I like both visually. Gloves of Dexterity, as mentioned before, setting our uh, Dexterity score automatically to 18 and giving us a plus one to attack rolls. And finally, the Boots of Speed. Probably, to, to the surprise of a lot of people, I didn't take Rogue levels in this build to get Thief Rogue for the extra bonus action, blah, 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 blah. Didn't really care for it on this build, but I still feel like getting that bonus action dash does make sense for that kind of speedy vibe. So the Boots of Speed are going to work out perfectly for us, giving us Click Heals, which is actually an upgrade over the Rogue's Cunning Action Dash, because this one also imposes disadvantage on opportunity attacks against us, allowing us to move through our enemies with grace and avoiding damage. So I think it works out quite nicely for us overall. And most of this stuff can be obtained fairly early, at least the three, these kind of three pieces can be obtained quite soon. And again, with the 1T scale mail on the hood, you can kind of achieve the look really early on. Now, getting on to the accessories, we have the Fae Semblance Amulet, giving us advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. I feel like a character like Drist, especially one that is embodied by a literal Arch Fae, would make sense having this sort of thing, having a very strong kind of mind. Uh, obviously, except for the whole Warlock stuff, but shh, we don't care about that. And also, this kind of helps offset the reckless, um, the reckless attack penalty of gaining disadvantage on stuff, so... I think it makes sense. I think that's only disadvantage on attack rolls. I think I'm thinking of the risky ring. Either way, this is kind of a throwaway slot. Put away, put whatever you like in here. Next up, after death do us part. When the wearer is downed, they rise once more with half their hit points restored, but are gripped by shadow possession. Remember when I said that um, the hunter comes out when this character is in dire straits? Well, this is literally that to the T in mechanical form. Unfortunately, as of the current patch, patch 6, this Shadow Possession thing is bugged. You just get restored with half your hit points and nothing else happens. Hopefully this will get patched because I think it makes the ring much more fun thematically as basically you are inflicted with madness and your weapon attacks deal on a bit of extra necrotic damage after you get back up. Which I think could be seriously fun as like a roleplay thing. Again, the character finally losing control and the hunter kind of taking over. And finally, we just have the Strange Conduit Ring. Whether it's Hunter's Mark, Darkness, Slow, you're going to be concentrating on things most of the time, and this is just going to give you more free damage. But again, this is a throwaway slot. Put whatever you like in here. So yeah, that is the kind of Dritzed fanboy build. Someone who idolized him so much that they made a Pact of a Warlock to literally become a kind of shadowy facsimile of him, which, you know, it's kind of like looking in the Uncanny Valley. It looks like Dritzed, but you know there's something off is not quite the same. And I actually think, again, this could work really nicely as a Dark Urge build, I just didn't really plan around it. And in fact, if you were playing a Dark Urge build, I'd maybe swap the Cloak of Protection for the Deathstalker Mantle to get that invisibility trickery nonsense. But otherwise, I'm quite happy with how this turned out. But it's not the end of the build. Drist is known for having a Panther Companion, and I wanted to get that somehow in this build. So obviously, I've gone for a Moon Druid with a Panther Wild Shape. Uh, basically just getting the kind of bite action, you know, Luna Mend, all of that sort of thing, the ability to turn invisible, so maybe he's kind of getting that invisibility from the Panther type deal, like it's kind of like a thematic link that you have. But I didn't just want to say, hey, I'm just giving this guy a Panther, it's just there to be a Panther, and call it a day. That's not what this is. This person is their own character as well. As you can see, they are a half-wood elf, and I actually believe this character would meet... Our titular Dritzed fanboy here, after they escape from the Underdark and kind of like helps them out, maybe like they escaped with like and they're like really wounded and maybe this character nursed them back to health. And he kind of told uh, this character the stories of Dritzed and she kind of became a fan girl to his fanboy. And as such, they kind of decided to go on an adventure together. Her being a druid by trade, living in the woods, learned to wild shape into a panther in order to kind of make that legend kind of livable. Because I think a big portion of wanting to be like Dritz as well is also wanting to spread that idea that drow can be good, similar to my Dancer of Illustray video. So I think these two would kind of go on an adventure together to kind of prove that the panther and Dritz, and, and like basically Dritz and the panther companion. But there is a few things about this build that stand out making it not just that.
Namely, I've gone for 10 Moon Druid levels, which gets us everything we like for two extra attacks, all of the Wild Shape forms, etc, etc, the maximum amount of um, HP and such for all of our forms, but it's also going to give us two levels of Bard as well, it's going to give us a bit of breathing room. For those two levels of Bard, I feel like this character is kind of like a, you know, very joyous, very free spirit, learn to play an instrument as part of being, you know, kind of on their own sort of soul-searching journey, as well as getting those two levels of Bard are really going to help us out. All this build is meant to do is help out our Dritz build. They're meant to be a support character for it. And getting that Song of Rest, giving us a third short rest to restore all of our Warlock features much more often, is going to be really, really nice. As well as getting things like summoning spells, like Conjure Woodland Being, Conjure Elemental, uh... Conjure Minor Elemental. Also, I threw the Heroism spell on here because I think it's kind of a funny idea that this character, like uh, our Dritz character, may actually be a bit scared and nervous in situations, but then she casts like Heroism on him to make him immune to being frightened, gain more hit points, and just be like, all right, I'm the hero now. Like that kind of thing. It's like an emotional support spell. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also things like Threns, uh, utility spells like Long Strider and Featherfall. We also get Vicious Mockery, which is always fun. Speak of animals on this character as well. Freedom of Movement as an, another kind of long-term uh, buffing spell. Um, I put Touch the City as laughter on here, because I feel like this character has to force themselves to laugh at this guy's jokes. I don't know why. It, it just felt funny to me. <laughs> I don't know why I, I, I included it. But also like healing spells to kind of keep the party healed when we're not in Wild Shape. Sleet Storm to disrupt casters. Disguise self as well, so these guys can both go in disguised. I feel like the bard levels just added a lot to this build, and also giving us a ton of utility and summons and such to really be effective on the battlefield. And the equipment is your standard druid affair, I'll go over it quickly. Shape changer hat to give us an extra wild shape charge per long rest. The armor of moon basking to give us temporary hit points and reduce uh, incoming damage while those hit points are there. As well as giving us a plus two bonus to armor class even while in wild shape as well as having advantage on saving throws against spells while in wild shape too. So overall just a perfectly great buff. And the cool vid token as well to give us feather fall while in wild shape and an increased jump distance. And more movement speed I believe as well? No, just jump speed. And finally, Shapeshifter's Boon Ring to give us a one plus 1d4 bonus to all of our checks while wild shaped. Basically, the big kind of uh, druid, uh, the kind of moon druid equipment selection here. Nothing really changes. Unfortunately, pretty much all of this stuff is Act 3 only, but as long as you're mainly focusing on the Panther stuff, you can just put generic spellcasting gear on this person up until Act 3 where you get this stuff. But speaking of spellcasting stuff, I've also adopted like kind of a healer sort of build for this as well, going for the reviving hands to give us to give anyone we heal the effects of Blade Ward, as well as being able to grant Death Ward to someone we revive. Again, more support for our main character. Use the Hell Riders Pride Gloves before grabbing these in the early game. They basically do the same thing, just a bit worse. As well as the Whispering Promise to give Bless to anyone we heal heal for two turns. So again, more buffs for us and this guy. And finally, the Boots of Striding 2, whenever we concentrate, and we will be, we'll be concentrating on things like Moonbeam or Sleet Storm or something along those lines, or Heroism, probably Heroism, uh, we'll, we'll be um, immune from being knocked prone, even in Wild Shape, which is great for us. And finally, I just went for kind of like a quarter staff to kind of get that druidy vibe, but I've gone with the Harper's Sacred Striker to give us an extra summon once per long rest, a level 6 spiritual weapon. So it's another body to add to the field in addition to all our other summons, as you can see. We've got, we've got four here, so overall just a ton of support and a nice kind of foil to our main character here, allowing us to get the iconic panther um, companion, as well as adding another sort of dynamic to our party. But yeah, I actually am really proud of how these two builds turn out overall. I mean, the Moon Druid stuff is fairly simple. I like to give a lot of my builds Moon Druid companions, uh, and this is no exception, especially when the iconic Panther make, just makes so much sense to grab. And again, all of that extra support really helps elevate the build. I mean, you can see in the combat footage that I'm showing now that I kind of just cheated completely by just getting a bunch of summons. Uh, but overall, I am really happy with like just how the builds performed. The Dritz build is a really, uh, it can be tanky, it can be evasive, it can be really, really, really hard hitting uh, with the amount of attacks it can do in a turn, as well as being able to just, um, you know, add on with extra things like Hunter's Mark and the like, and like the, um, the special attack from our weapons and such like that. Like this build does do a lot of damage. I think the combat footage mainly just showcased how powerful the Panther Wild Shape is though, just being quite tanky and being able to do a lot of damage as well. So I think these two are just made for each other. I, again, 
T tackling a character as popular as Drist felt really, really daunting, and I stayed away from it for the longest time because I was like, there's no way I could get it right, or I would get it so right that someone else who did the same amount of research would have just come to the same conclusion, i.e. the Blood Ronin video I mentioned, which I keep mentioning because he's a very, very good YouTuber. Uh, again, I try not to watch other YouTubers' videos, but I have watched a few of his, and he is he's very good at what he does, <laughs> uh, which is what we do, basically. But um, I really wanted to kind of put my own twist on the idea of making Drist in Baldur's Gate 3, and I really think I've done it here. Like, creating a, like, again, basically just turning, like, the kind of, like, obsessive fanboy idea into a character with actual, like, depth and, you know, you know, different kind, and, like, a desperation about them. But, again, still rising up to be that hero in the end, despite the consequences that it could bring about them later. Again, Warlock Pact, the Hunter exists. Like, throwing in those levels of Barbarian just felt so nice. But, again, uh, look in the description, I've got some notes there about, like, the variances in the build that you can do and all that sort of thing. Uh, again, all my builds are just posted in the description. You technically don't even have to watch my videos. You don't. You can just click on the video and look at the description and be like, hey, that's an idea that I can use for something later and turn into my own, which, if you do that, that's perfectly fine. But again, for those of you who get to the end of these videos, um... Well, I mean, I what else can I say? I really, really appreciate you. Again, we've built a really, really solid community here, and I very much appreciate it. Now, these past couple of videos I've kind of done, a, if you made it this far into the video, leave comment this type thing, and it's just, I know it's dumb, I know it's engagement bait, but honestly it's so fun to see all the comments that just show that people have actually watched the video that far in. It feels so nice just to kind of get that recognition, so I'm going to keep doing it because it makes me feel good. And today we're going to be commenting uh, Attack of the Dritzt Fan Club. I don't know why. <laughs> I have no idea why it's attack of, but it's fun. But it, I just it popped into my head like five seconds ago, and you know what? Screw it, we're going with it. So attack of the Dritzt fan club. I think it's like attack. Is it like attack of the fanboys? Something? Maybe that's where I got it from. I'm not 100 percent sure. Let me know if that's a reference. Uh, but yeah, I think that is going to do it for me. Thank you all so much for watching, and I shall see you all next time.